Verily, I say unto you, John 5. It, it repeats it for emphasis sake. I like that. Thank you so much. In addition to, in addition to your prayer request, could you please add, um, you know, Terry and Diana Edwards, Karen Smith Edwards, that would be Terry's sister, passed away. I just heard about it this morning in the main service. And so let's pray for that family and uh, pray, for, pray for them, please. Also, another member of our class, um, Mrs. Um, Julia Garce. I spoke to her this morning, and uh, she does not sound good. Uh, she has, sounds like she has pneumonia. Pray that she'll go to the emergency room. And uh, that's all I'll say there. Shout out to Miss Julia. Go to the emergency room, please. <clears throat> Some of you are looking at me like, <clears throat> but you know, I'm going to say this as kindly as I know how, and I'm talking about Dan. I'm not talking about anybody else. I can be so stubborn sometimes, and that's when my wife says, you're on your own. <laughs> Rightfully so. She'll say, you're on your own, and I know what that means. That means I'm not going to get any, oh, poor Bubby. Uh, <laughs> after it passes that level, I don't give you more compassion and kindness. Thank you, Brother Mark. Romans chapter 13. We finished up Romans 12 last week. And while we were finishing in verse 21, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. <clears throat> so we found out that in our relational, in our relational life, that is the believer with mankind, others that are not ourselves, if we follow the advice in Scripture, then we will defeat Satan's attacks against us. We have to remember this. So many times we can get bogged down and we think this thing is personal, but it's not personal. <clears throat> the fight that we fight... That is a pastor's um, struggle as well. Because when, when he's set out to accomplish what God has called him to do, then he is literally taking on the forces of evil and working against the forces of evil. We can't take that personally. That is Satan against God. Satan is always anti-God. Anything that God does, Satan does the opposite. And he wants to destroy anything that God does. So we keep that big picture in our mind. You will destroy or defeat Satan's plots because it is he who inspires others to do evil to you. And his real motive and the goal in moving them to do evil to you. And many times, these are, these are folks that their eyes, the, the eyes of their their understanding are blinded by Satan. So it's not that they even realize what they're doing many times. You remember the phrase that um, our Heavenly Father, that when Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. And what phrase did he use? For they know not what they do. And he wasn't saying, oh, bless their hearts, they don't know what they're doing. He literally was saying, hey, they, they, they don't even realize how they're being used of Satan in order to get this done. <clears throat> and so his real motive and goal in moving them to do evil against you is to destroy you by causing you to sin in anger, in, retali in retaliation, in bitterness, unforgiveness. And just to recap something we said last week, he no longer has control of your soul. He no longer can control your destiny. So now he has to do something else to make you ineffective as a believer. Because he cannot, as a believer, he, can, he, he does not want you affecting someone else to be saved. He knows that that is the ultimate goal. 
God wants everyone to be saved. And Satan does not want that whatsoever. He no longer can affect your soul. So he is going to, he's going to work on your effectiveness as a believer. So we saw that in our relational life. Now in chapter 13, we look at Christian responsibilities towards the government and towards morality. Where in verse 1, it says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. <clears throat> that phrase literally means there's no power ever exist were it not for God. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are what? Ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the what? The ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil. And I know what you're thinking immediately. I know where our mind goes to. Brother Dan, how can you even say this? Well, I'm not. I'm just reading. That's, uh, I'll just be straight up with you. I'm just reading what's here, and then we'll, we'll get into this here, all right? Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have, the pra have praise of the same, for he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For, for this cause, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. So in verse 1, he clearly says we are to obey governmental authority. I know that stings a little bit. It stings a little bit because we may not agree totally with government authority. But we are to obey government authority. <clears throat> the speed limit says 65. So, we drive 70 because nobody ever stops anybody for going four over or five over. We set our crews as we're going down the highway always above the speed limit. Why? Because we're just sticking it to the man. We can do it. And we're getting one more mile an hour. And in 13-hour trips... A 13 hour trip, that's 13 miles, that's 13 minutes. And at the end of a trip, 13 minutes, that's a long time. <laughs> and we can do it. We can do it. Now, is it right according to Scripture? No. I have to, now, I'm not going to tell you whether I do it or not. I'm just saying, <laughs> according to Scripture, you say, Brother Dan, you described that very well, didn't you? <laughs> You even thought it out. <clears throat> According to Scripture, we're supposed to obey. I was told by, you remember Brother, Brother Sherry that, that comes, uh, comes back every now and again and visits. He was telling us some stories. He's a state trooper here in Tennessee. And he was telling us some stories. They mostly only stop those that are going above 90 and 100. That just blew my mind. I mean, who does that? I only go 10 miles over the speed limit. <laughs> what a good boy am I? 
You see how easy it is, though, to fall into that trap? The Bible says, obey all government authority. So I'm just, I'm just laying it out there. This is what the scripture says. We are to recognize that, it says in verse 1 through 5, that rebellion against God-ordained authority is rebellion against whom? God. Why? Because he instituted it. He ordained it. He ordained it. That's why it is such a serious matter when you start monkeying with the institution of marriage. Why? Because God ordained it. That's why it's so bad to, to go against what God established as gender, man and woman. Why? Because he ordained it. That's why. It's, it's not because, oh, well, you know, I'm this and I'm that. No, it's because God ordained it. It's that simple. It's not hard. With God, it's yay or nay. With God, it, to use color, it's black and white with, with God. It's not, it's, there's no gray areas with God. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. It's that cut and dry with God. You're not going to bargain with God over certain things. He says the way things are, and we go with it, and he can. So God has ordained the system a government authority. Now, this passage does not teach that all specific leaders or laws or governments have God's sanction. It doesn't teach that. And you and I both know that not all leaders and not all laws, there's laws on the books that go directly against Scripture. Okay? So that takes care of that. That's what we were worried about, right? And it doesn't have God's sanction, but rather the system of rule by governments, as opposed to anarchy, is ordained of God. Okay, are we clear on that? Does, that? does that help? Does that make sense? Now, a dictator does not rule with God's approval. That's not right. That's not what God ordained. That's not the authority that he established. And so we must be clear on that. Now, God does, however, sovereignly use even evil leaders to accomplish his divine purpose. Let's look at scripture. In Matthew, Herod. Herod was horrible. God knew what he was going to do, but God, in spite of who he was, God used that for his advantage. And different ways in, in scripture, you'll see where God can do that and he can use it to his advantage. So he sovereignly, God used evil Pharaoh, to reveal his divine power and bring about the establishment of Israel as a nation, Romans 9, 17. God even used Hitler oh, to motivate Jews to bring about the reestablishment of Israel as a nation in 1948. That happened. Now, God didn't, God didn't initiate that. God didn't um, sanction or call Hitler to do those atrocities. But God took a horrible situation and he used it to bring about the reestablishment of Israel as a nation in 1948. So, resisting, verse 2, resisting governmental authority is then resisting God and will have negative consequences eventually you're going to get pulled over. Eventually, your insurance company is going to look at your tickets, and this is what they say. How do I know? I worked for an insurance company for nine years. They say, these are the tickets we know about. These are the times you were driving fast that we know about. Chances are, there's a bunch of them that you weren't caught doing. And so your rates go, right? The risk is higher. That's why we have rules. 
So the general principle which should govern our attitude toward govern, government and law is found here in Romans 13. Now, Acts 5, and let's look at real quick, let's save our space in Romans. Let's go to Acts chapter 5, verse 29. We have a statement by the apostles here. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. There is an exception to the rule. Okay? Man's laws, which contradicts God's higher laws, have to be, they don't, they don't have to be obeyed. You say, it's the law that we can murder babies. I don't care. God's law trumps that law. Period. It's murder, according to God. There's certain things that man has declared. Um, let's just throw out one that's, that's a delicate one. It has never been God's heart and desire to, to have divorce. It's a horrible thing. It's messy. God never established that. And I'm sorry, man, it got really quiet in here. Listen, I'm not against it, all right? I'm not, I'm not against divorcees. It happens. It has happened. Many of us in this room. But that's not God's heart. God established from the very beginning in Genesis chapter 2, in verse uh, 23, 24, 25, it says, man, man shall leave father and mother. And there was no father and mother at that time. But he said, man shall leave father and mother and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. It says that three times in the Old Testament. You get in the New Testament, and it says it another three times, and God adds to that, and what God hath put together, let no man uh, tear asunder. Okay? Now, Moses come up with the, uh, a divorcement, and that became a practice. So that, again, it's man that, that established that. And I'm not, again, I'm not talking against that. I'm just saying this is God's law, this is man's law. God's law trumps man's law any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Okay? That's just, that's just the way it is. Governments were created and are given authority by God for the purpose of restraining evil and encouraging good. That is their main purpose. Back to Romans chapter 13, verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. And that's what it should be. That is why we should be, as a believer, pro-law enforcement. They're there. They're there to do exactly what verse 3. Rulers, they're not a terror to good works, but to the evil works. Yes, evil people don't like cops. And I'm glad. That's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. We should go like this when we see the cop in our mirror. Pull our foot off the accelerator. We should. That means you were brought up right when that happens. You should. You should behave when, when, when somebody in authority says, hey, straighten up. Our problem in today's society is that Someone in authority says, hey, straighten up. And we go, what's your problem? Whoa. How do we handle that? We're seeing the results of that. From getting away from the way God had things set up and designed. And let me just be honest with you as believers. And I'm not trying to crack on this. I'm just saying... When we do these minor things that are not big things, we give the idea that it's okay to break the law. I was, I was really bad about this, and I'm, I'm confessing here, okay? When, when my kids were at home, and I'd climb in the truck, especially after they learned how to drive. When I was teaching them how to drive, what did I tell them? Buckle your seatbelt. 
Why? It's the law. Dan didn't always buckle his seatbelt. But it's the law. What, am I, what message am I sending my kids if I don't do what I'm telling them to do? We break, we break it down if we're not careful. You say, oh, Brother Dan, you're being a stickler. I'm just reading the scripture. And this applies to me as it does to anybody. Primarily to me. So governments were created and given authority by God for the purpose of restraining evil and encouraging good. Verse 4, governments are given authority by God to do what? Punish evil doers. When we get fines for doing wrong, that's sanctioned by God. When we get a ticket for speeding, that's sanctioned by God. When we get dinged for not renewing our tags, because the government says we have to. The government that God ordained so that we can have a system of control. Man, this is heavy stuff. That's sanctioned by God. Now, we also get into right here in verse 4. For he is the minister of God to thee for good, but if thou do that which is evil... He says, be afraid. You should be scared. You should be worried. You should be worried. For he beareth not the sword in vain. So, what is that talking about? That's talking about what Genesis 9, 6 says about the death penalty. Shall we read it real quick before we have to shut it down here? Genesis chapter 9 and verse 6. Whoso sheddeth man's blood by man shall his blood be what? For in the image of God made he man. Correct? So when someone goes out and just kills somebody, you're monkeying with something that God created. And God said, that's not right. And God said, you go out and do that, your life should be required. We got away from that. And look what we're putting up with today. People go and they just do what they want. Why? There's no consequence for sin. We do what we want. Christians, then in verse 5, are to obey government, not only to avoid punishment, but also to maintain a good testimony. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for the conscience' sake. Do you know how easy it is to set your cruise control on the speed limit? And when a cop comes out of the weeds, like happened to me on 26 here, they found a new spot to hide, right? Did you talk about that? <laughs> Just after the 65 down to 60. There's a nice flat spot and there's a tree hiding it. And next thing I know, he's on my right, on the shoulder, and he's headed to get somebody. And I'm like, I had no idea. But guess what? Thankfully, I was going the speed limit. And he wasn't after me. For conscience sake. Whew. Thank God. It's so much more peaceful just to set your crews on the speed limit and just let God take care of the rest and let everybody else like act crazy. So it, it also for good, good testimony. And then I'll finish with this and I must close. We're, it, it talks about verses six and seven. We're to pay our taxes and treat government authority with proper respect, realizing that since they serve in a God-ordained system, then they are, in effect, God's ministers. That's why we pray on our prayer request sheet every Wednesday night. We have those that are in authority that we pray for. We may not agree with everything that they say, 
or they believe, but we pray for them because the system was ordained of God.